Good morning, my dear grade 8 students. Today, we are going to study about forces and motion. But before we actually proceed, I would want you to meet someone who can help us. His name is Sir Isaac Newton. Let's get to know him better. Newton was a fellow in England. He had a little bit stuffy bad hair, but quite an intelligent guy. He worked on developing calculus and physics at the same time. During his work, he came up with the three basic ideas that are applied to the physics of most motion. These ideas are tested and verified so many times over the years. The scientists now call them Newton's Three Laws of Motion. According to Sir Isaac Newton, the motions of all objects are influenced by the forces acting on them. Now, let me discuss with you the different forces that act on objects. Let us begin with the forces that act on objects at rest. Say, for example, this man is standing on the ground. Identify the forces that act on this man. First is gravitational force, and the direction is downward. The next force is normal force, the force that is provided by any flat surface. In this particular example, normal force is provided by the ground. So, what can we say about the forces an object at rest? This pair of forces are equal in magnitude, they are in opposite direction, and they lie along the same line of action. How about the forces on moving objects? Say for example, this car is parking on the side of the street, so it is not moving. So, the two forces that act on it are gravitational force, or force due to gravity, and normal force. So, it won't move. When will this car move? The moment the driver enters the car and starts the engine, it will provide the driving force. But of course, another force is going to counteract the driving force. And what do you think it would be? It is actually the frictional force. Now let us try to compare these two forces, the driving force and the frictional force or friction. They are opposite in direction. They lie along the same line of action. But... They are unequal in magnitude. So what do you think will happen? Now that you know about the forces that act on object, I think you are now prepared for the first law of motion. The first law of motion is called Law of Inertia. Now, I want you to think about this. If the bowling pins were not hit by the ball, do you think they will move and tumble down? How about if it is a lane with no end and without any barrier? Do you think the bowling ball will stop? Rolling eventually? Now, to help you better understand the first law of motion, I have provided videos of simple activities. So grab your materials and let's get started. So 
So the materials that you need are... Hi guys, today we are going to explore the law of imagination. Materials that we need. Number one, cup. Number two, cardboard. So we need cup. Number two, piece of cardboard. Points. Ten pieces, five peso coins. Good. And ruler. Are you ready? Let us begin. Let's begin with the first activity. What happens when you slowly pull the cardboard? When cardboard is slowly pulled, the coin on top blank the cardboard. What do you think is the correct answer? The answer is... The coin on top moved with the cardboard. Let us identify the forces that act on the coin. We have the normal force provided by the cardboard. And we have the gravitational force that will pull the coin downward. Well, it's a good thing there is a normal force. When the cardboard is pulled slowly, force is applied onto the cardboard but not on the coin. And friction between the cardboard and the coin prevented the coin from moving. Now, the tendency of object to resist any change in its state of motion is what we call inertia. Now let's have the second activity. This time, I'm gonna flip the cardboard fast. Yay! <laughs> What happens when you flick the cardboard? When the cardboard was flicked quickly, the cardboard moved forward but the coin did not move with it. When the cardboard was removed from the underneath it, the coin blanked the glass. What do you think is the answer? Is it moved with, dropped inside, or flipped along? The answer is, drop inside. So let us try to identify the forces that act on the coin. So we have applied force and frictional force. But because we applied greater amount of force, this pair of forces are no longer equal. Greater force is applied on the cardboard and it overcomes the frictional force between the coin and the cardboard. So the normal force were, was removed. So what happened? Force of gravity worked. The very reason why the coin fell down. The normal force provided by the cardboard disappeared. The gravitational force worked on the coin which made the coin to fall down. Now you see that when forces acting on the coin are no longer balanced, it will change the object's state of motion. So, from the coin being at rest, suddenly it moved downward. Now, let us have the last activity. Activity number one. Watch this. So the stack of coin. What happens when you hit the coin at the bottom? Why is this so? When we hit the bottom coin with the edge of the ruler, it blanked from the pile of coins. But the other coins stayed in place. What do you think is the answer? Is it moved out? rolled over or nothing happened? The answer is the bottom coin moved out from the pile of coins but the other coins on top they stayed in place. Why? Since 
force is applied only on the bottom coin, it is the coin that will be displaced from the stack of coin. And since there is no force applied on the rest of the coin on top, they will not move or they will stay on their places. Now, how do you think inertia affects you? They say that when you are riding a vehicle, your velocity is the same as the vehicle you are riding. So, say for example, you are riding a bus and the bus has a speed of 45 km per hour. All of its passengers are said to move at the same speed. Suppose the bus that you are riding suddenly stops. What do you think will happen to the passenger? Will the passenger move backward or the passenger move forward? The answer is B. The passenger will move forward. This is the first law of motion. It states that an object at rest will remain at rest or a moving object will remain moving at constant velocity unless acted upon by an external and balanced net force. Let us go back to the passenger of a moving bus that suddenly stopped. Let us now summarize what we have learned from today's video. So who is the English physicist that studied about the laws of motion? It is Sir Isaac Newton and he was the one who proposed the three laws of What is inertia? How is it affected by the object's mass? Inertia is the property of matter to resist any change in its state of motion. Objects with greater mass have greater inertia. What does the first law of motion tell us? Law of inertia states that an object at rest will remain at rest or object in motion will keep on moving at constant velocity unless acted upon by an unbalanced external net force. Thank you!